Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about Sinal purpura. So from its name alone, you can tell a lot about this um, condition. So Sinal um, is basically associated with aging. So H, purpura stands for, um, you know, it comes from the word purple. So what this condition is, is basically a um, common but benign, that means it's um, harmless condition that involves um, a recurrent um, bleeding into the skin. So, um, Sinal purpura basically um, it is more um, common in elderly people. So like I mentioned before, um, age. And I'll explain to you why, why that is so. So, um, as, as we age, um, the skin tends to become thinner and is uh, relatively more inelastic. And the capillaries that is supplying the skin also becomes more fragile. So in essence, what happens here is um, the capillaries are more prone to damage um, with, with minor trauma and that will result in um, bleeding into the um, underlying tissues, underlying tissues. Um, you get um, red blood cells um, extravasation. That means the red blood cells leaks out into the surrounding tissues, um, and as a result, um, the um, surrounding macrophages will try to phagocytose it. And, and um, the bleeding also causes a deposition of um, pigments like hemosiderin, which gives it its brown um, color appearance um, in the skin as well. So just to recap, so basically in the capillaries, um, uh, it's more fragile and therefore it's more likely to become damaged and the leakage of red blood cells um, could occur and it could be phagocytosed by uh, macrophages as well. So, um, it, I'm just going to discuss a few things about its clinical features so you can identify it um, clinically and to rule out other um, potential um, forms of dermatological um, conditions as well. So, as you can see here in this diagram, um, uh, the, it is often on the extensor surfaces of the forearm. Surfaces of the forearm. Um, which could explain um, a lot because, say, um, when you're resting your arm on the table, uh, even minor trauma could, could lead to bleeding. Um, therefore, um, extensive surfaces are generally more common. Um, it is also about one to four um, um, centimeters in diameter. Uh, you can see that this, there's a you know, brownish or um, purplish appearance. There's also generally well-defined margins. Well-defined margins. And it um, often takes um, one to three weeks to resolve. It can even go up to months. So I, I've explained the uh, pathophysiology of it. Um, sometimes sunlight, so photo excessive photo exposure, so too much exposure to sunlight could also damage the capillaries as well. So that's um, so sunlight as well as aging um, uh, contributes largely to the pathophysiology of this condition. Um, so apart from the forearm, the neck and face could also be affected as well, uh, but they're generally less common. Um, so in terms of diagnosis, it's largely based on the clinical features alone. Um, and uh, in terms of management of this condition, it tends to self-resolve, like I mentioned before, um, generally about one to three weeks, months. It tends to be recurrent, so once it happens, it's, it can happen again, um, especially, especially when um, patients um, um, have had this condition before. Um, so... It, it often also um, seems to be lifelong as well. So there are certain risk factors that make a patient more 
predisposed to developing this um, condition. So um, generally patients who are more than 50 years old, um, 10% of patients uh, over 50 years old would uh, pre- may present with um, senile purpura. Um, it's, not effect- it's not affected by gender, so males and females are affected equally. And also more common in patients who use um, steroids um, f- for a prolonged period, uh, anticoagulants as well, which could um, result in an increased uh, predisposition, predisposition to bleeding. Um, and that could explain the senile purpura. So in terms of management, like I said before, you know, it's, it's self-resolving. Um, and it's also important to uh, use sun protection because like I said before, the excessive sun exposure uh, contributes largely to um, damage of the capillaries as well. So it's important to um, use sun protection like sun, sunscreen uh, when going outdoors as well. And that's one thing you can advise a patient. So um, that sums it up. Um, in, so just in summary, this um, is a condition that is linked to aging, um, senile purpura. Uh, and what is important is that in for purpura, uh, it is basically a purple discoloration. Um, and is in this condition, it's non-palpable. So, um, so non, non-palpable. That means it's not raised. Um, it's, so we call it a macu. Um, which means it's flat, um, and and you can't you can't you cannot feel it, um, with your fingers when you run your fingers over the lesion. Um, it's also linked to recurrent bleeding into the skin. So like I mentioned before, the pathophysiology uh, tends to be in elderly patients whose skins uh, may be bleed, a, a bit thinner and more inelastic. The capillaries are also more fragile and can occur with minor trauma, which leads to bleeding into the underlying tissues and red blood cells start to come out into the surrounding tissues and the macrophages um, try to engulf it. So photo exposure, uh, excessive sunlight could also lead to damage to the capillaries. In terms of clinical features, uh, it tends to be more on the extensive surfaces. It's one to four centimeters in diameter often brownish and purplish due to the presence of um, this pigment called hemosiderin. And uh, there's certain risk factors like aging, like I mentioned, for more than 50 years old, um, and the use of steroids and anticoagulants could also lead to that. Uh, it generally has a well-defined margin, uh, as you can see in this picture here. Uh, in terms of management, it tends to be self-resolving one to three weeks, um, or could even go up to months. Um, it's recurrent, so it will tend to occur again and again, uh, and it's important to use some protection. Thank you.